Hi, I'm Mallory Gwynn from the Chamber of Commerce, and we happen to be at CTV5 with an amazing group of people. And we're just gonna, actually, we're gonna start by going around the room and introducing ourselves. So, Ashley, why don't you kick it off? Perfect. So, my name's Ashley McFerrin. Um, I own Canby Eye Care here in town yes. and have for the past almost six years. Yeah. I'm an optometrist. Yeah, very cool. Mr. Dave? And I'm Dave Lynn, and I'm an optician and director of community outreach for the Optician Association of Oregon. I'm also founder of the Oregon Vision Coalition. Cool. Now, Janet. I'm Janet Baker. I'm executive director of the Oregon Optometric Physicians Association. Well, that's a mouthful. Isn't it? <laughs> OOPA for short. Very good. Nice to have you here in the studio. Thank you. And John. Yes, and I'm John Zig. I'm an optometrist in Canby as well, and I own Canby Vision Clinic. I've been here for about 25 years. So optometry is, is an interesting um, a field because you all work in an industry that maybe it's not the money you do it for. You really maybe even started with the story and, and why you even went into your profession at the very beginning. John, what was that for you? Well, <clears throat> I've been involved with optometry. It's been part of my life since my dad was an optometrist. Mm, yeah. He started his uh, the practice here around the early 60s. So I've grown up with it there. And um, at an early age, I realized that optometry can be a very fulfilling, rewarding profession, yeah. um, helping uh, people to maintain their uh, quality of life. And uh, it, it's, it's been very fulfilling for me. Yeah, for sure. Was there, was there any particular time that you thought, dang it, that's what I'm going to do? Or was it was it just always, it just, it was set in you by your dad, maybe? Pretty much said, my yeah. dad, you're you're going to school, son. And that's what I'm going to school. And, uh, and, um, and going through school, I, it was pretty much at first you were drilled into my head, that's what I wanted to do, but you know, I realized that this is something that I want to uh, pursue. And Jan, what about you? Now, now, you work with optometrists, yes? I do. I, I really have a rare privilege to represent these kinds all across the state. And um, uh, I'm, we run the uh, association, the professional association for optometry in Oregon. And we get to do a lot of the legislative advocacy work and provide their continuing education. and. It's, it's a real privilege because I, I have worked with about every kind of doctor there is, uh, MDs, NDs, PhDs, DOs, DCs. <laughs> and especially working with so many different. These, these are scientists. Their, their undergraduate degrees are often in biological sciences or microcellular biology or, mm -hmm. or something, and they discover that, that this is a passion and, and a pathway for them. Yeah. Very cool. Now, Dave, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, where my passion came from is that when I was five years old, I remember my dad saying, see that cow out there? And I could not see it. <laughs> that it was just a big blur. And, he's, and I remember him vividly saying, I know you can see it. Just tell me what it is. And it, you know, he, and then when I got into school, in order for me to see, I was taking a book and I was holding it up like this here to see it. And so I got kind of labeled as a person that just wasn't all there in their mind. Well, and it was in the second grade, I had a second grade teacher that said, you know, maybe we should have your eyes looked at. And when that happened, my life changed. You know, just kind of visualize when you see the big E, when you go in for to see sure, these different yeah. folks for an exam, I can't see the E, <clears throat> just a big blur. Wow. And so, where my passion comes from is that I, my, my vision wasn't a learning issue, it was a vision issue in order to learn. And so my passion is I don't want any child in the state of Oregon in Southwest Washington to go through what I did. And that's the reason why we're doing what we're doing here today it's because of that passion. Is that that's where that comes from? Yeah. Well, you do, yeah, and you do have a tremendous amount of passion. So for much passion. You know, you're crazy busy in the community doing stuff. So well, we're yeah. here because of Dave. I mean, he is he is the world's best ambassador for yes. for vision. I really am glad to call him a friend. Um, 
but I also wanted to, to make that connection, that that happens so frequently with children, that we, we know that one in four school-aged children in Oregon have undiagnosed vision problems. And they often get misdiagnosed with either special needs or attention or deficit, you know, attention yeah, deficit right. disorders. They get tracked, they get medicated, and they never reach their educational potential. And beyond that, if you do the math and the trajectory, we know that, um, that third grade reading levels are used to determine how many prisons are built in this country. <coughs> and if we know that a quarter of those children might just need a good pair of glasses, then we wouldn't have 70% of juvenile offenders um, with undiagnosed <coughs> problems and adult offenders with. So it's very, it's, just a, it's a comprehensive issue and we and uh, all, I know that, that these doctors would agree that children's vision should be checked with a comprehensive vision exam, comprehensive eye exam before age one. Most people don't know that. We know that 80% of learning takes place visually for children under 12 but 86% of children don't have eye exams. So, can, okay, so I just gotta ask this question. How, how at age one, how, how does that work? I mean, because you wouldn't even think that there could be response, but there must be, right? Yeah, so we can do an entire comprehensive eye exam without any input from a child, a baby, a patient, a nonverbal patient. Um, we have instruments that we use that allow us to tell if they have a prescription. We can, I can tell you what your prescription is without going which is better, one or two. We, we can be very, very accurate with that. And, um, and I'm part of a program called Infancy where there's actually, um, there are free eye exams for um, children from six months to a year. And it's funny, it, people that, aren't around it, they have this kind of response like you have that it seems impossible to do that. And quite honestly, infant exams are some of the easiest <laughs> exams to really? do, in my opinion, because yeah. as long as they don't bring them during their nap time. But, yeah. um, <laughs> but uh, yes, we can. We dilate their pupils. We can look in and make sure they don't have anything uh, wrong in the back of the eye um, and for a large prescription or anything like that. So yeah, it's very doable. Yeah, every, sure. every week. So, so very, very <laughs> cool. So as long as you've got the floor. Tell us why, the why. Why yes. did you get into this? Um, so similarly, my father is an optometrist, and I, however, had no interest in being involved in optometry. I was never, never worked in his office or anything like that, and um, my whole family's in the healthcare profession of some sort, and I was the person that wanted to try to be different. And <laughs> so uh, I started in athletic training, physical therapy, and then hospital administration. I kind of switched around. but. What happened is I did an internship at a physical therapy clinic thinking I was going to go to physical therapy school and I just was miserable. And so one of the things I tell young people is that, you know, on the job training or internships are so important. And I know we have a great program here in Canby for that. But um, back to optometry, I just, I had a job in college and I, for an optometrist and I, and I loved it. And for me, it is certainly about, um, I had the uh, conversation with a patient this morning an, an elderly patient that needs cataract surgery and quality of life is directly linked to vision and there's no doubt about that but one of the other parts I really you know pride myself on in our profession on is there's so much else we can see in the eyes um, related to your systemic health diabetes high blood pressure MS um, arthritis problems I mean many 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 things and so uh, we don't just deal with vision. Uh, there's a lot more that we that we deal with, and I think that that's fantastic. And I think I just told Janet and uh, Dave a story a couple of weeks ago. I had a, a patient that, a child that was in for an eye exam, and I find this kind of darkly pigmented spot in the back of her eye. And we what we worry about in the eye is um, uh, ocular melanoma. And uh, she, I told the mom, you know, it's, we're just going to follow it. It's the first time it's been noticed. And then the mom just pulled me aside and said, well, my, you know, her uncle has ocular melanoma right now. And it's very, very rare. Um, so, th you know, this, this eight-year-old, she didn't have any vision problems. They just kind of went in for an eye exam because they thought it was the right thing to do. Mm -hmm. And now we're having the discussion of we need to monitor you to make sure we don't see any changes in this. So things like that. That's, yeah. that's what it's about for me. So. So. 
one of the reasons that we're all here in this room today is because we have an event coming up on August 21st that is kind of a monumental event. You know, you don't see a full eclipse of the sun very often. And I was in conversation just a couple of days ago, actually, uh, which is great timing for this. And uh, this person and I were just um, talking, and, and the subject of the eclipse came up. And, and the comment from this person was, yeah, and, and it's a full eclipse, so you really don't have to, you can look right at you, you know, you don't have to worry about your eyes. And um, that is a pretty big misconception right now. Yes. So I think there's a nice um, prepared um, uh, PowerPoint that we're gonna, you're going to walk us through, and we're going to have a conversation about it as we you know, get to different things, and we'll hurry through it. But let's walk through that, because, because of that misperception, and then we're going to talk about the real ways to, to, to make sure that you don't get damaged. Yeah, so, okay, so first we'll just kind of show a path of the eclipse, and we're hearing a lot about it in Oregon because the path of totality is coming directly across our state, and we're the first state on the West Coast, yeah. and it's a big, big deal. And um, so you can see there that it's going all the way across the country. And um, the, the big thing is, so in, in that path of totality, the, it can be completely covered for over, you know, from two to three minutes, depending on where you're located at. And yes, it is true for if you are in total, in the path of totality for that two minute mark, you, there will not be a sun there. And so yes, you don't need glasses at that point. The concern is, is that you're a, if you're a tiny bit out of that path of totality or if yes. um, people don't understand that looking at the sun even for a little bit can cause harm to the eyes, then our, our, our concern is that you know, people are gonna do damage to their um, retinas. So um, a couple of facts to kind of go through the, the whole eclipse is as we know that the moon fully blocks the sun during totality and that's that's when it can be okay to look at it without <laughs> glasses. Um, still don't necessarily recommend it, you have to no. be very careful. Um, but interestingly enough, the path is about 70 miles wide and the big thing is, is how many people this is going to, um, how many people are going to be able to in this path because it goes through some large metro areas across the country and um, and, and they're saying that this could be one of the most witnessed eclipse or the most witnessed eclipse ever in the history. So um, trying to just get the word out that we all have to be safe, I think is very important. Uh, and again, like I said, the two minutes and 41 seconds. So two to three minutes is where, um, how long it will last for totality. Now the um, leading up to totality, when you need your glasses, um, it can be many minutes leading up to that. And I can't remember exactly, it might be in here, but uh, so I have never seen an eclipse. The last time that there was an eclipse in the uh, US was 1979. And um, so this is a big deal. And then the last time it went across our in the entire US was 1918. So um, I'll be the first to say when all this started happening last year, um, I was president of the OOPA with Janet at the time and I kind of just didn't really get it. And I kind of said, who cares, it's an eclipse. I did not realize what a big deal it was. I think I even had a meeting with you two and we, <laughs> I was like, oh, I don't know. Um, anyway, it's a big deal and um, there's a chance that it's the only one I'll see in my life or anyone right. else will see in their life. So, um, and as we've all heard here in Oregon that campsites are sold out, hotels are sold out and they have been for years. Price gouging going I on. Yeah. <laughs> right? I mean, everybody's taking advantage of it. Isn't that sure. awful? I just yeah. heard on the on the news last night that a, a motel on the coast that probably is a hundred dollar a night hotel, yeah. four hundred ninety nine dollars. That's a crazy. Night. Yeah, and I heard they're taking a two night minimum. Yeah, and they're they are renting out um, the dorms at uh, OSU. Oh, I've heard, yeah. yep. um, which makes some money for the school. That's well, good. That's, that's, that's <laughs> hey, just out of curiosity, so so like John, have you had people you know, you know um, uh, patients come in and ask you about the eclipse and what it could do to your? I mean, is that a common question that you get? Very right common, very common. Come on in. You know, can I get set my uh, 
sunglasses, you know, the big thing where the welders that get that ass, and I think you play welders masks, it's kind of like, no, there's something a lot safer to use, and we'll have them, and I'll have to probably get that later, but yeah. there's something a lot safer that we'll have access for you to be able to view it. Because the flash from, well, I, I, I do have a welder at home, so I understand that a little bit. Um, that's pretty bright, but when you're talking about the sun, we're talking about mega times more, right? I mean, it's... Yeah. And it's, granted, it's so far away, but it's the sun. So mm -hmm. it's, it, it's not good for your eyes. Um, yeah, for sure. <laughs> you know. It's not. Um, yeah. How, just how, in some of this, you know, I'm a novice here. How long does it take, if you, if I was just to go out and stare at the sun, would 15 seconds, it would affect my eyes? Would it, could it damage my eyes in that short of time? It's a matter of seconds. Yeah, and the, the thing is, is that, um, it, it is the longer you look, the more damage that can occur. And additionally, the, the more um, visual disruption or disturbance, I should say, can occur. You end up with kind of a blind spot in the center of your vision. Um, so, so yes, it, but it can just be seconds. And like so, less than two seconds. Yeah. Two to three seconds. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Can you talk to me about burn sun, like it's a sunburn? Mm-hmm. So that's a common thing with welders is they truly get the the surface of their eye gets burnt from welding. I had one yesterday actually, but um, they in extreme circumstances that can happen with the sun too. I mean the the big thing we worry about though is called solar retinopathy, and the the two times in history where that's really been an an, an issue was after an eclipse in England years ago, and then also there was some um, and I think this is in this. Uh, presentation, but there's like a there was like a sun worshiping kind of uh, cult or group or something, and so they would just stare at the sun oh, for yeah, yeah, yeah. minutes, <laughs> you know? and uh, so that was a problem. <laughs> but <laughs> different lemonade, but uh, they drank their Kool Aid. Yeah. 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 So I didn't want to sidetrack. <coughs> no, no worries. So the the totality is as it says is day will be like night but even if you're a little bit outside of that there it won't be near as um uh intense or you, you know but it, you'll still you can see on the pictures you'll see things like that but uh, again as it says the partial eclipse which is outside of that 70 mile um, zone and outside of that two minutes that it's totally um fully eclipsed, you have to wear proper eye protection or, or you'll be calling Dr. Ziggurai with a, with a problem, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and you don't want that kind of problem. I mean, it's enough to, you know, have just natural things, you know, happen, but you don't want to force the issue. By yep, yep. It um, and then all, all this shows here is what we actually see in the back of the eye. And, and uh, there's a big red arrow pointing to the abnormal spot there, and uh, it, th that's the, the reason that that's such a problem is that area is called the macula in our eye, and it's where our central vision comes from. It's the most detailed part of our vision. So something gets affected there. I'm sure many people n have heard of macular degeneration, which can be a very visually devastating disease. Um, but if that, gets if that area gets affected from the sun, um, it is a very noticeable problem because that's your most important vision so then yeah I thought this was pretty interesting we have a few myths here and uh, the first one is that the rays are more intense during an eclipse you know that like you know other times the sun's okay to look at <laughs> um, but <laughs> Is that really a myth? <laughs> yeah, I mean, and I and I pr I remember hearing this years and years ago too, and I mean, the thing is, is we all go out and look at the sun when there's a solar eclipse. <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, the the rays are the same, still dangerous and still a problem. So, um, use protection. <laughs> <laughs> But the sun doesn't know that it's in eclipse. <laughs> <laughs> so Don't blame it on the sun. That's an interesting myth. Well, and that makes me think of something here. I, you know, in our part of the state, there is a chance that we're going to have cloud cover. I mean, granted, it's a good time of year to have an eclipse, but um, it's Oregon. We all know. We know it can happen anytime. 
Yeah, and um, as we've all heard on the news, there's concern of what traffic's going to be like trying to get somewhere, and um, I'm just going to be working. So <laughs> I think Dr. Zig said he's going to be doing the same. So uh, it's I, th I thought it was interesting on the traffic issue that I heard on the news that people will try to follow the eclipse. Yeah. I that's going to happen. Oh my gosh. I think Alaska that's Airlines is doing a thing in a plane. You can. That's interesting. Oh, really? yeah. Uh huh. I just no, heard about that last week. I yeah. wonder what they're charging yeah, for yeah, that. Right. The wrong side. Yeah. <laughs> There's fights on the plane yeah. trying to get to the correct yeah. side. Nice. Oh, man. Um, um, can I also, yeah. the, yeah. we, we were down at the legislature doing an information session for the House Health Care Committee on, on the eclipse and some of the emergency preparedness folks were there. Yes. And they're concerned about running out of water, about cell phone towers being overloaded. We're expecting a million people to come to Oregon it's crazy. for this two minute event. Yes, it's insane. It is. It's people so, take like the va a vac their main vacation. Around, around this event yes. yes. for two, two minutes. minutes. Yes. 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 So I, I guess my advice would be if you don't have to drive on the highways that day, probably don't. Just look out your window. Yes. You catch With glasses Facebook on. Facebook. With the proper eyes. <laughs> no, right, right, exactly. Or you can just catch it on Facebook the next day. There yeah. you go. <laughs> I'm sure someone will have it on their live feed yeah, too. Um, a couple of other myths. Um, one is that you don't need a telescope. Uh, to uh, see this. It's, you can just look up and it will uh, be there. And in fact, using a telescope can even be more as harmful or more harmful than looking through, um, looking directly at the sun because it's so intense. Uh, we'll go through some safe ways to, to view it and one of them is certain filters for telescopes, but quite honestly, it's just not necessary to use a telescope in any way whatsoever. Um, so just wear glasses. So here they are the safe uh, viewing methods. Um, the biggest thing are these glasses we have here and here they are. Here they are. And when you put these on you absolutely can see nothing. It is completely dark and oh, wow, you, you, right. you, you <laughs> can only see a little bit of the sun when it's out there. So where'd everybody um, go? <laughs> you guys look great. That's crazy cool. <laughs> um, so these are available at both Dr. Ziggs and my office. We have them. Also um, the uh, OOPA, you can see the website there, organoptometry.org. Um, they have them there as well. So you're happy to, or you're welcome to just come by our offices to pick them up um, or we can get you, if you need a bunch of them for some reason, we can get you in touch with Janet uh, or you can go to that website to request them. They've got thousands, I believe. So, yeah. Is there any other type of glass that, I mean, this is really, this is the one. This is the one you want. Yeah, this is a, a standard uh, level of protection that is certified as you can see, international standard, ISO, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. So it's, it, this is it. And uh, things, this is also coming up, but other things, people think there's a myth that you can look, use a mylar balloon um, to, to use to protect your eyes and, or just a balloon in general, or just regular sunglasses. And they just absolutely don't protect your eyes. So just don't do it. Um, second thing are these welder's glass. Um, but it has to be number 14, which is the darkest shade available. So all you welders out there, uh, if yours aren't this, don't use your hood or whatever to look at the um, eclipse. Um, and the other thing about this, and it says in here, <coughs> these glasses are cheap. A dollar from OOPA. Dr. Zig and I both have them in our office, and you can just come get them. We're just giving them away because we don't want anyone to uh, yeah. Harm their eyes. So. One of the things I was really impressed with, my grandson through the school district got a pair of these and asked me about it. And thank you for making that happen. That you did that and got him told us to do it. But yeah. What age group was that? Uh, they sure. they told me it was all uh, elementary school, I think. Okay, yeah. so I would say if parents got that, look hold at that, hold on to them, hold on to them, get it for the whole family. Absolutely, absolutely. Good point. There is one point about the glasses, though, yes. that's worth mentioning, and that is that they have to be completely intact. If there's a, 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 a tear crease or a tear or a or pinhole, don't yeah. use them. Come to Dr. Zick or Dr. McFerrin's office and get a replacement because 
they are useless if they are not completely intact. Makes sense. Yeah, that's a really good point. Yeah, yeah. Good, good job. Um, so another one, are, as I spoke of, the filters for a telescope or binoculars or a camera. Right. It has to be very specific how it's put on. It has to be on the front of the lens. You have to have a very specific filter. And all of these things, as uh, same with the uh, welder's glass, right. they're expensive. So just come get glasses. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. That's, a, uh, that's what I'm thinking. I know how much welder's helmets are. For yeah. Like yeah. 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 Right. So, 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 so I'm curious that I get these and I get a retinal damage. How do you fix that? How do you fix retinal damage? Yeah. Well, I don't really want everyone to know this, but for the most part, solar retinopathy is self-limiting and it will repair itself n the majority of the time. But it can be months or even a year or so, depending on the severity of it. So, which involves a loss of your central vision yeah. and you have a blind spot. And so, um, it, there are times when it can be permanent, but most of the time it's self-limiting. Uh, but still, don't do it. <laughs> well, and, and you know that's it's that's really good to know and everything. But look, the risk is so not worth it. If mm -hmm. you if you went up in an airplane and said, well, listen, there's a hundred of you on board today, and one of you's not going to make it, you wouldn't fly that craft, right? right? Right, right. So it's the same concept, you know. Just do the right thing. Look, they're free for crying out loud. Just visit these offices, and you got it made, right? Yeah. And that's, that's the best that we can do. Mm -hmm. it, it is the best. Yeah, and then another, in, in regards to that, even though this, this acute or this, you know, time-specific solar retinopathy um, can repair itself, sun damage also contributes to cataracts and macular degeneration and other <coughs> ocular diseases. And so right. you, in the long run, it might be 20 or 30 years before then you have some right. sort of problem, but you know, having this kind of real um, intense damage at one point in time can really put you at a greater risk for things like yeah, that. So, sure. yeah. Um, then the other uh, way to view is to make one of these projection boxes. Um, again, I don't really recommend it. It's something fun for children to do as kind of a project, but then make them wear their glasses. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and also, the, the other downside of this is you're actually, when you do this, you're looking at a projected image. You're not actually looking at the eclipse. Right. So I kind of like to think of it as how everyone takes videos and pictures of everything they do now. Why don't you just experience the moment live? For yourself, live. <laughs> right, yourself. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, at Integrated Eye Care, um, they have an have an example of this, um, or if you have any questions, you can also look on uh, YouTube. There's tons of examples on um, videos on how to put these together. So, unsafe ways to view. Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> these are the ones I was speaking of. You know, just uh, regular sunglasses. Also, and I think this is really important. You know, we after patients have had their eyes dilated, we give them glasses to protect them from the sunlight when they leave our offices. Um, they're called post-midriatic spectacles. Those are not safe for the eclipse. Right. Yeah. So don't keep those. Uh, you know, I have patients those say they've got four in their in yeah. their glove compartment. Yeah. Those aren't good. <laughs> Just keep them there. <laughs> Bring them in next year, and you can use them when you get dilated. We won't give you another. Part. No, I'm kidding. Um, also, like I said, mylar balloons or um, X-ray film, CDs. You know, all of these things. And then again, back to the welder's glass. It has to be the very specific. Um, 14 and 14 you can't degree. use like shade 10 and shade 4 t to uh, compound on each other that doesn't work that way so no filters like coffee or anything like that and uh, no telescopes or anything without the proper filter or, or just don't use a telescope <laughs> or come get the glasses because exactly <laughs> exactly <laughs> Yeah, so we've listed here places that you can get the glasses, but again, Dr. Zig's office and my uh, office, um, we have them available, and uh, if we run out of them, uh, we can get you in touch with uh, Janet. Yeah, cool. yeah. Well, good stuff. Um, and while you're out there getting glasses, you might as well just get an appointment and get your eyes closed. Really, um, uh, you know, from a, you know, I just turned 61, I shouldn't say this. I uh, just turned 61 and, you know, I have reading glasses, you know, and, um, but you really do notice, I'm noticing just, you 
go month by month. It's like, oh, maybe I should go to those 2.25s. You know, maybe I should go to, and, and I know it makes you guys cringe. Like, Just get in there and get the blood and ice checked out. But this would be a good time, a good reminder because, you know, we've got an eclipse to remind us to get glasses, um, the right kind of uh, protection for your eyes. And it's a good time to just remind ourselves that we need to get checked out. And, and, and that's so important for young kids going to school. Right. You know, so important. You know, I, I wanted to tell the story earlier. I did a vision clinic out in Hillsborough, and this girl was special ed, language barrier, third grade, and she couldn't see at all. We made a pair of glasses for her. And the next year, she is back mainstream, fourth grade, seeing really good. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's a vision issue. It, it totally vision. is. And and just to kind of review, I've I tell all of my patients this. Um, for many years, our profession has not done a good job at educating parents on the importance of eye exams. Where everyone takes their kids to get their teeth cleaned twice a year, they see a dentist. They do not come to the um, uh, eye care provider near as much. The recommendation is um, between six months and a year at age three. If everything's normal at age three, then it's recommended at age five and every year in school. And what I tell parents all the time is just as, um, you know, their kids grow and change and kids have different size feet, eyes change too. And just because they come in one year and don't need glasses doesn't mean they're not going to need them the next year. Yeah. And in our daughter's case, you know, she was just having a lot of headaches, you know, mm -hmm. and and we just couldn't figure it out. And I was like, let's just try to get your eyes checked. And that was it. Yeah, you know? yeah. It was yeah. crazy stuff, so. And, and it's not a, it's not a um, criticism of pediatricians to say specifically children should have comprehensive eye exams from licensed eye doctors. Because they go to school for four years to study nothing but conditions, diseases, um, of the eye, and they their equipment and their training is specifically around diagnosing and treating eye eye conditions and diseases. In 2014, there were 250,000 cases of diabetes that were first diagnosed by eye doctors. Get yeah. Yeah. out of here, really? Yes. And and one other point to your point about pediatricians um, in needing comprehensive eye exams, we I mean I will say we have. Um, Canby School District does an excellent job and with the Lions that come in and yeah. do the screenings in the schools. But screenings in the schools and screenings at a pediatrician's office are not a comprehensive eye exam. And I can tell you almost every day in my practice I see a child that the mom says, well they passed their screening at the doctor or at the school, why are you telling me that they need glasses? And it's they they're just screenings. That's what they are. They miss things. Sure. Um, and so there's there's no replacement for a comprehensive eye exam. Yeah. yeah. John, you'd agree with that, yeah. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> totally. <laughs> so. <laughs> well, listen, what a what a fantastic group. I I'm just feel really privileged. You know, there's times in your life where you think, man, I was around a, a really great group of people, and that's one of these times for me. It's just <laughs> awesome to listen to the knowledge and the wisdom. And um, thank you so much for pulling yourselves together, Dave, for making this yeah, happen. Yeah, Dave. You know, we really, you work your heart out, yes. and because it is your heart. And so thank you for that. But it's all of your hearts, and that's what you can really see, um, you know, from this perspective <laughs> is that you're all in it for the heart of it because you just want people to um, see well and, and not have problems that way. So thank you. Thank you. From the bottom of my heart. So, yeah. Mallory, good checking out CTV5. Uh, join us on our next show, and we don't even know what that's going to be, but stay with us on CTV5. You can find us on YouTube also. And uh, thank you to the crew, uh, Greg, Ken, Tony in the background behind the cameras doing their work so well. And uh, do everything you can to support CTV5. Thanks. Thanks so much. Thank you. Wear your glasses. I'm wearing glasses. Hey! I can see the signs. Good stuff. <laughs>